Well, this has been a, a wonderful time together. I've really enjoyed listening to you, learning from you, absorbing your love and uh, creativity and energy and imagination and visualization. L let me just ask you this. Do you have any thoughts or concerns about artificial intelligence? <laughs> You're just throwing that in as a little PS, aren't you? Um, yes, I do. I, I have concerns about anything that gets away from the simplicity of the human heart. But that process began long ago. I was a little bit um, intemperate about organizations um, earlier in this interview. Um, you know, we set up structures, we set up all sorts of things which are basically artificial. On the other hand, it, there are enormous benefits to be had from artificial intelligence. You know, in the world of medicine, in the world of automated tasks. So, you know, I mean, I know that a Google search engine is not AI. It's one step short of that. But, you know, just think what we gain from being able to Google something rather than thinking, no, you see, I've got a number of books around me here. Well, I was brought up on books, um, but I tend not to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very grateful for technology moving forward, but it's not so much that we have to control it, it's that we have to stay real. Our humanity has to be triumphant. So the light shining from our hearts, yours and mine and everyone who's listening, that is what will actually um, be triumphant in the end. I think you made a, a, a brilliant distinction, uh, kind of the, the heart versus the, the brain. Yeah. And maybe we become too brain oriented with artificial intelligence and less heart and human kindness oriented and not lose our heart, not let our brain so overtake our heart that we lose well, touch with our heart. Once again, you put it so well, Mike. I mean, absolutely. But there's a balance. I mean, all those books, they look quite heavyweight books. I did a PhD at university. So, you know, I've had my spell in intellectual life, but I don't rate intellectual life as in any way superior to heart life. And I was very fortunate at university. I had mentors who were very keen to stress that what matters with the mind is not that it rushes through to a conclusion and says this equals this equals this. I suppose if you're in mathematics, you need to think like that. Um, but rather, what does it feel like to hold this perspective? And that is so much better a use of the brain than hard facts, basically. So we can use our brains well, but, you know, when I say what does it feel like to hold this perspective, that's my heart saying, how's yeah. my head reacting? So the heart is boss. And this is the perspective right here. It's simple. It's yeah, three words. You have a quiet mind because your heart rules it, basically. <laughs> Colin, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I will wrap this up. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to say one more Can thing. I say one last thing myself? Yes, please, please. I please, just please. feel moved to say it. Uh, if I say moved to say it, uh, I'm for once being psychic. Um, I told you I wasn't very psychic, but as I look at your face there and the background, I look right through that. I'm not going to say anything deeply personal to you. Don't get embarrassed. But I can actually see the faces of your listeners all over. And I just want to say that from my heart, there is love coming to them, every single one of them. Whoever is out there, please do feel loved. And that's what Whitey Lodge is really all about. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you 100%. Thank you.
Thank you, Mike, so much. So uh, uh, such an honor to be with you, Colm. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. It's been great. I've loved it.